Today on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat, the custom Hydra Step at TRB gets lit with a high-end LED lighting package from LumaShore and more. We take a ride with Mike and Debbie of Wildfire Marine on their personal passion project, a hand-built racing catamaran. FS Boating Editor George Labonte checks out a very custom skiff built by Reva Braben. And Dale at TRB launches the Faux Wood Hydrostep Project. All coming up on Florida Sportsman. Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So over at Two Rivers Boatworks, we've been really busy with our wooden hydro step project. This is a carbon fiber boat that I am making look like a wooden boat. And I had never done a faux technique before I started this boat. And as the boat progressed, you know, I did the hatches and then I started on the sides of the boat. And every step along the way, the boat began to look more and more like one of these old wooden boats. It's come to crunch time. I've had to put a deadline on when we want to get the boat done. And we have the guys at work. I've been working really hard to get it done. And I think we, we're going to hit our deadlines. I'm really excited to see this boat on the water. All right, so with this Hydrostep project, we have uh, decided to take this boat top of the line. And uh, I have been put on to the lighting part of the boat. And uh, we decided to go with LumaShore. Um, the full RGB control and we ended up doing two live well lights, uh, under gunnel lights and two courtesy lights. So with this LumaShore install uh, it was actually pretty simple for the live well lights and the courtesy lights you know you take your right size hole saw, punch your holes, a little silicone and you're good they're in. Uh, with the under gunnel lights it's some stainless steel clips you run those where you want it, plug the lights right into that clips in nice and sturdy and then run your lights to your strip light driver or your light control module which the lights plug and play right to the module they both send power and information to the lights uh, for full RGB control and then both of those control modules uh, connect through an information wire which then that information wire goes to a command link which is mounted in the console we're waiting for Dell to finish up our uh, custom hatch that we're going in, going into the console that's going to have all of our switches, our radio, and our LumaLink RGB controller. The guys are over in um, bay number three getting the boat rigged. Um, it's down to me now to do the, the acrylic dash panel. Down to crunch time, I, I don't have the time to mess this up. Guess what I did? I messed it up. Uh, while we were bending the panel, um, I actually broke it. I didn't heat it enough and um, probably just being a little bit impatient. We then had to cut another panel and halfway through that cut, my laser died. So being on a deadline and then having a, a number of set, setbacks, um, I had to regroup and we came up with the current um, dash design. And I still believe that we were able to pull it off um, and just a number of other little elements along the way that we, we have to get done while the guys are busy doing what they do. They're good at doing what they have to do and I'm good at doing what I have to do. So now that we got our panel from Dell, uh, I was able to install the LumaLink. And LumaLink is very simple, four screws, you get it nice and straight. And uh, ethernet cable goes right from the back of the LumaLink right into the command center and controls up, good to go. You're ready to get your lights ready to play. So one of the things I really wanted to do with this boat is I wanted a black rub rail with a chrome insert and Taco have an, a new rub rail system called Superflex which they send you the actual rub rail and they have this new chrome insert which is really easy and took about 15 minutes to put in and it's really a great way to do a quick transformation to a boat. 
with this whole boat coming together and all the little details falling into place, I'm really looking forward to pulling it out of the bay, getting it in the sunshine, and getting it down to the water and putting it on the water and see how beautiful it is with all the light reflecting off of it. When we come back, George Labonte joins dreamboat owner Reeve Abraben aboard his custom-built skiff in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boatworks. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. At Two Rivers Boatworks, we turn dreams into reality, one boat at a time. Specializing in the installation of the industry's leading audio, electronics, and LED lighting systems to the custom design and fabrication of dash panels, foam decking, upholstery, and more. Our experienced technicians are certified to service Mercury, Yamaha, and Suzuki outboards. New Boat Envy? Our line of custom performance skiffs can be tailored to meet your unique boating needs. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida, and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago, and the dreams just keep getting better. Most of the boats that we see on these One Man's Dreamboat segments are existing production models that somebody's taken and done some level of restoration to it because it's a tried and true design. On very rare occasions, we're fortunate enough to see one-off builds, which are a completely unique, one-of-a-kind boat built from the hull up, and we get to watch the boat start to finish turn into something like nobody's ever seen. And that's exactly the case today. Today, we're joined by Reeve Abraben of Gainesville, Florida, in our home waters of Stewart. Uh, fished with my brother and my father, not a lot when I was, was young. From Miami, we'd fish out of a Black Point. When I got a little older, <clears throat> we moved to Pompano. I had a next door neighbor who was a retired uh, charter boat captain, a fellow named Art Robinson. And he sort of became a role model for me. And he took me dove hunting, taught me offshore fishing. He bought a half of Little, uh, little Conk Key, and I started going down there to visit him. <clears throat> and I started bone fishing and that's when my life changed. See, the first boat I got when I was out of pr in practice was a Silver King. Bought that, I had that for several years. Sold that, I bought a 19-foot um, redfish. I had another, I, I bought a Challenger, a boat called Dance the Tide. It was somebody's custom Challenger. I had that for a number of years. <clears throat> and then I, I just, I got out of boats, got back into guns and hunting. And I was without a boat for a very long time, and I missed it. So it was time to replace it. And in the course of looking, I found, uh, I went to the Envy Boat site. It's, this is a build it yourself. So one day the, the material came. Uh, he had a truck to me and there were, it was a uh, laser router cut uh, framing jig that I had to assemble, just like an old model airplane, balsa wood model airplane. Fit pieces fit together be beautifully. All the foam came, the, Div the Divinacell and the Kusa and I started working on it um, and learned as I went along. And I'm not intimidated, I'm not afraid to try new things. And the boat was a big thing to try, but I set off to do it. I was committed to finish it. So I spent three years building the hull and then um, I met Chris Morjohn on the internet. And I did a favor for him and he said, what can I do to, to repay? And I said, it's not necessary. He said, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I'll come up there and I'll build the deck for your boat. So he came up with his wife, spent a week at my house, and he built the mold, and he built the deck, and he built the hatches. It was a remarkable piece of, of skill. He's really, really a talented guy. And then I had to start doing the hatches. So I just basically winged it, and it turned out large enough, big enough, and it worked. And I took it to about 85% complete, and I said, this is as far as I can go. I need somebody to help me with the finish work. And I took it to, to Tom Gordon at the skiff shop. So he built the boat, he finished the boat, they, the painter did a fa fantastic job, they're fairing people. One thing I forgot to mention was the polling platform. When Chris was at my house, I was looking at his sketchbook and he'd, he'd done a sketch of a, of a skiff he was planning on build, building and he just put this interesting looking three-dimensional polling platform drawing on the back of his skiff. And I said, I'm gonna do that. Florida Fabworks in Jacksonville agreed to do it and they made this polling platform. So I took it to a friend's 
hot rod body shop. I said, paint it. Blank check. <laughs> but he did a beautiful job. What I wanted the boat to look like was a shrunken down Carolina sport fisherman. And that's what I did. The console, if you look at the console, it looks like it's got the wings like a, the flying bridge, like an old sport fishing boat. It's my dream, it's my dream boat is what it is. Some people might hate it, some people might think it's the greatest thing in the world. It just seems to go with the boat. It's kind of retro, classic, modern. It's a little bit of everything, but it works and, it's, and, it, and, and it floats. And the first cast on the first fishing trip, uh, George caught a tarpon. What else can you ask for? It's got good juju. That's right, you might have noticed the very first cast made on the boat, and I was hooked up to a beautiful river tarpon. After a solid fight, I got a chance to see just how nice it was to fish on this little skiff. I was extremely impressed with the functionality of this little skiff and the aesthetics, and I'm sure Reeve is gonna get many years of enjoyment out of this beautiful boat. After purchasing building materials, outboard power, electronics, and other various components, the cost of Reeves' Dreamboat comes to a total of approximately $75,000. When we return, we join Mike and Debbie of Wildfire on their one-off racing catamaran. This segment brought to you by Bird's All Marine Design. Quality marine accessories built to stand the test of time. Bird's All Marine Design has been a leader in aftermarket and custom boating accessories for over 35 years. Based in West Palm Beach, our facility specializes in the manufacturing of custom T-tops, leaning posts, consoles, rod holders, marine canvas and upholstery products, and a wide variety of anodized aluminum hardware. Come visit our spacious West Palm Beach facility anytime, or visit us on the web at birdsallmarine.com to learn more about our most innovative products. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as we take a ride with Mike and Debbie of Wildfire Marine on their personal passion project, a hand-built racing catamaran. Here at Wildfire, we, we basically we do boat restorations, uh, and the name Wildfire came about by accident. I bought a, a race boat that uh, I had raced with another uh, another friend of mine. It was called Wild Bill's Express, and the boat caught fire during a race. And so he was going to sell it. So I, I bought the boat, and after restoring it, I was trying to come up with a name for the boat. And uh, the girl I happened to be going out with at the time was a hardcore sailor. And she said, uh, well, it's bad luck to change the name of the boat. And we both looked at her and said, what are you talking about? The boat just burned in a water line. And so she kind of came up with the name and said, well, why don't you keep part of the name and call it Wildfire for, for a goof? And we just kept it. When I went into business, I just kept it. When, after racing the first two years with that, uh, the 28 Checkmate that had burned, um, I decided I wanted to get into racing a catamaran. And at the time, I happened to see this boat, uh, wooden boat magazine with a race boat on the front. And it was a couple of brothers from Connecticut. Uh, they had a boat called Jesse James, which is a really famous offshore race boat. And they had one built out of wood. And I was reading a sidebar and I thought, you know, I'm a carpenter, I could do this. And so I went ahead and started building a boat. <laughs> and the first one really, I mean, it, it, it ran. It did, it did fairly well. Um, it was a good learning process. And uh, I always wanted to build another performance boat, not necessarily to race, but I did want to build a performance catamaran. And so um, that's what we decided to build. And it, it's, it's kind of, it's a little intimidating when you back up to the shop door and you drop $5,000 worth of Akumi plywood on the floor, quarter inch plywood, and the stack is only about seven inches tall. And you just drop, you know, $8,000 on material <laughs> and then a bunch of rolls of fiberglass and, and uh, epoxy resin. But, you know, like my father always said, you just, if you gotta do something, just do it. And, uh, and that's what I did. And as it went along, it actually started to kind of snowball. Uh, and I did it entirely w with just my wife and myself, which is uh, another great process, I mean, the hardest part was the fact that uh, uh, even though it's our passion, it doesn't pay the bills. We still have to do all the customer boats. And so we continued to work on customers and push this off to the side and work on it as much as we could, which is namely Saturdays, Sundays, and every other day. It was hard, you know, and I mean, 
mean, we got on each other's nerves because we were working ungodly hours on weekends, but we still had to run wildfire. So, you know, the business. Like my wife always tells people, if we built two, you know, a boat and two houses and we're still together, evidently we did something right. He does his thing, you know, working with the fiberglass and whatnot, and I like working with electric. It was both of us working it, you know, like, you know, I, I would throw a suggestion out and we'd look at it and it might not work that way and then he would throw a suggestion. So, you know, it was a compromise and it really turned out fantastic. Finally, after about eight years, we're finally at the point where we have to dial a boat in as far as engine heights and props and uh, that is a very tedious project. If we get above 90, I'd be happy because it's a, you know, it's, it's a garage built by two people. Uh, you know, this, this isn't a million dollar project. When I built this boat, I probably had $15,000 worth of materials in it. Um, and the rest is all our, our labor. So it's more of a labor of love. We just wanted to do something. Now that Carlissa is here, I mean, it's great going out on the boat with her. She just, she's so excited about going out. She loves the boat. At first I thought, well, we're gonna have to go really slow because it'll, it'll, you know, it'll be scary and everything. It's not the case at all. I mean, she just loves the boat. She doesn't care if it's doing two or if it's doing, you know, 80. But she just loves being in the boat. Pop lays down the throttles. You know, she sits down and she just enjoys. She loves the wind blowing through her curls. Overall, I mean, we're really happy with the boat, the way it turned out. I mean, we're glad we really took our time and uh, we're really happy the way it, it runs out on the water. So I really would like to build another one all completely exposed wood. I think it'd be great. Uh, I think it'd really be an attention getter, that's for sure. When we return, Dale and the team at TRB launched the Faux Wood Hydrostep Project for the first time. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as Dale of Two Rivers Boatworks splashes the all wood retro mod Hydra Step project. So once we finally got the boat polished, ceramic coated, wiped down, not a single fingerprint on it, man, it looks like you stuck a ruby inside of a diamond. Just, I don't know how to explain it. It just hits you from every angle. I would actually say that the, the, my favorite moment on the boat was the second that it pulled in out of the bay and into the sun. You know, sort of I had a bit of a lump in my throat when the boat came up because it's been such a big part of my life over the past four months. It was amazing to feel that we had done this all and we had created this basically floating piece of art. My favorite aspect of the boat, um, coming from a little bit of a carpentry background, is, is seeing the detail in, in the wood grain that he, that he hand painted on there. He's got dovetailed joints on the, on the back and the transom, the dowel pattern that he, he took from an old Chris Craft uh, boat. All those little details are really what stand out the most to me and uh, really make that project extra special. I mean, I'm a, uh, an engine guy, I think bringing that mercury back to the vintage uh, stage for that, you know, the wood boat, the vintage side of it, I think that thing pops very well. Um, <laughs> blown away man. It really am. man it just it sticks out like a sore thumb but in a good way you just you can't not see it you everyone that has seen the boat can't stop looking at it they can't stop touching it you just have to look at it man my, my favorite part of uh, of this boat you know would have to be just the detail that that Dell went into on on all this hand paint and all this airbrush man it's just absolutely beautiful and you know, you, you just, you can't make that up, man. That's just, that, that's pure, that's straight from the heart, man. And that's, 
That's him. My favorite part of the boat is the console. <laughs> That's because I spend so much time on it. It blows me away. And all the wood and the stainless together, it, it really pops. One of the big things for me with the boat was always going to be the dash. I've said this a hundred times, the dash is the crowning jewel of every single boat. And, you know, getting the, the period correct steering wheel with a modern twist to it, using the Lavorsky controllers, I love it. You know, it just adds an element to a period, of, you know, an older period of boating, an older time of boating. So now that we got uh, this boat in the water and we're doing the photo shoot and uh, the sun's going down and we can finally turn this luma shore on. Lights come on and you know, first of all, just very impressed with the lighting and uh, the LumaLink control system and you can, you can make these lights do just about whatever you want um, between each zone and uh, yeah, couldn't be happier with it. It turned out way better than I thought it would and I'm really, really humbled by building this boat and by everybody who's had a lot of input into it and the guys have taken a tremendous amount of pride in building this boat. You know, in the grand scheme of things it may not be a big deal, but at Two Rivers Boat Works, it's a big deal. Yeah, so you know, we, we got hit with the deadline on this boat and uh, which made, you know, everybody that works here, all of us guys get together and come out come in and, and, and bust this job out, which you know, we don't play around, man. We get our stuff done. You know, we, we met the deadline, and not just did we meet it, man, we, we freaking crushed it. This boat is uh, better than we could have asked for. Everybody here has their special talent, and to see everybody at the same time putting in what they're best at to make this thing come out as fast and uh, as good as it did uh, is absolutely epic. There's nothing, nothing better than that. So. I enjoyed being able to work with everyone on a single project and all of our hands working together to make this possible. Watching the process has really been something special. Um, I think once we got to the end of the project, it's, it's definitely one of a kind. There's nothing else on the water like it. So all in all, I think it, the boat turned out great and uh, it's something that we should all be very proud of. This project has been amazing. I've worked with a wonderful group of guys. Um, it, it's been a surreal experience, and at times I've actually had to pinch myself that we've created this boat. And we're, we're on to the next project. So, you know, uh, done a great job. We're gonna get stuck into the Stamus now and get that boat done. Make sure to tune in next season to see the dreams of boat owners come true on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat.